Slowly but surely, the log leaders are starting to make an impression that they want this uh, league championship, the Absa Premiership. Slowly but surely, it's becoming clearer, though, that down at the bottom, Platinum Stars, we could be saying goodbye to them because all it really takes now is one victory by Ajax to say goodbye to Platinum Stars. But we'll tell you all about the mathematics and everything else, though, because it's a jam-packed show today. We do have everything, including Mr. Sponton, who will have international as well as local footage uh, to look at. But then, hey... We've got the gentleman here. They're right here. They're right here. Juicy Lips is here. <laughs> Precious is here. Good to see you, gents. Great to be here, Rob. Great Let's get into Rob. it. Yeah, because we, we want to go straight into the match center and look at the results from the weekend. Because for me, there were some key ones. Yeah, the Free State Derby always provides uh, the electricity. This time it provided two goals. What that means, we'll tell you in a second. But Bud the defending champions, being obliterated by Mobility Sundowns, is probably the other big, big result as well from the weekend. Not the most inspirational game. Cape Town City versus Super Sport United. But Super Sport United are in all sorts of trouble there down at the bottom of the Absa Premiership. So three points for Kaiser Chiefs. Excitement on the bench there for them. Platinum Stars in danger with three games to go. Amazulu, Orlando Pirates. If you attended that game or you watch it on television, arguably one of the best games that we've seen in local football this season. Full stop. Baroque FC coming and stuck against Maritzburg United. And when you see the quality of goals as well that were scored in this game and the quality of what Maritzburg United are all about, then you'll understand uh, why we talk about them as being, well then, title contenders now. Probably not. Chapel United 1-1 against Ajax Cape Town. And obviously for Ajax, they live to see another day. So what does this mean overall, though, in terms of uh, what the table tells us? It tells us a story, and I'm going to bring the gentleman in here, because with 26 games played, 52 points, and we're talking about a three-point difference. Precious. Pirates, well, what are their chances? Well, absolutely. You know, it's going to be a case of Orlando Pirates having to win all their games. If they lose or draw one game, mm -hmm. and Sundowns win their next game against Arrows, and the following game against Marysburg, then it's game down. Game over. Game over. So do you give them a chance, though, Mr. Shong, Orlando Pirates? Why not, Robert? This is football. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible for as long as it is football. And uh, for what they've been able to do, to do, particularly in that game against Amazulu, where they were trailing and how they came back, they showed character. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can only hope that that character they will be maintained to continue with the chase to keep the league alive. All right, so Mansburg United somehow, I mean, they lost the footing somewhat, but you've got to give them credit, though. When you look at where they are, position number three, Free State Stars position number five. But I mean, we'll talk about the plight of Kaiser Chiefs and what that result of the weekend meant for them. And you're seeing faces like Cape Town City, Chipper United, you know, you'll say, yeah, good running for them. 34 points in 27 games and a plus one goal difference so they are scoring more than they are conceding which is a good thing just shading by one Bloemfontein Celtic I mean this is going to be a dog fight in the top eight there it's going to keep changing right up yes. until the last day yeah with three games to go it's anybody's bet everybody's fighting to get that important win to stay in the top eight Rob and that's not excluding some of the other teams in yeah. position number nine and ten as well so anything is still possible but uh, you know you mentioned Maritzburg and I think that is key to 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 mention the fact that they've shown consistency yeah. you know everybody thought they will fade as the season progresses because often we see we saw the likes of arrows starting the season well but yeah. they seem to fade but it's off to Maritzburg they've done absolutely well all right let's pop to the top there. That's where Baraka FC comes through. 33 points. Now we talk about them interchanging. But Vesvitz could end up in the top eight as well. You never know because they're on 32. But then look just below. Amazul also on 32. And that is why that result, Kevin Johnson said mm. it was a game that they did not deserve to lose. Indeed. Um, uh, fantastic. And uh, keep it in mind that uh, he's playing with a team that was promoted from a first division. So you could see no, that. No, they were not promoted. I mean, they bought their stadiums. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They finished but, them before. Yeah. They were not promoted. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, here's the thing. And for the game that they're playing, they're playing a game of their lives. And uh, it's fantastic how Kevin has done to help them. But you can see that there's still tactical challenges there and there that uh, has found, has put them in this position. I can imagine if defensively they can get those right, they will be way up there. All right, so the two KZN teams, the Durban teams, basically, that's the Lamontville Golden Arrows in the mix as well. I mean, I mean, they're sitting here. 
they at times rise to the occasion. They play good football. For me, they don't deserve to be there. They deserve to be a top five team. And somehow the season has kind of swallowed them up. Yeah, you know, when you don't score goals, it's all about goal scoring. Rob, you know, we, we're all going to have teams that concede. But you've got to increase your number of goals. So even if you look at the likes of Orlando Pirates over the weekend, if you look at Amazulu, as Kevin said, they played a fantastic game. From the go-get, they were on, 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 the, on, on, on the ball, passing the ball, great movement. But what happened at the end? Pirates scored when it mattered most and took all three points. Golden Arrows, yeah. same situation yeah. also. Um, it's a young team. Remember, the um, MDC team is what they promoted for the most part to be able to compete right now. Mm. They're gaining the experience. Look at the games that they played. They would lead, they would score and lead, and right at the dead, they'll concede. But that's what we were told last season. No, no, no. We were told that last season, and yes. that is why they were leading for most but of the earlier continued. season. They've continued to rob in these young stars. For me, I would say, let them survive, and then let's see what next season will do for them. Would the youngsters in a top division be an excuse for where you are? Because that's a decision you make, that's a decision you take, that's a decision you've got to absolutely, live by. Absolutely, absolutely. You've got to manage that process, Rob. Yeah. If you bring in too many youngsters too soon and you lack the experience, you could find yourself in that situation. Yeah. And Balance is not right no, there. Yeah, nobody, nobody's going to accept the fact that, yeah. you know what, the youngsters, if platinum go down and they cite the example as we mm. played too many, nobody's interested. Exactly. You now find yourself in the NFD. Now, look at Bulawani City and where they are positionally. In 13th place with 30 points, but they do well and they score maybe two goals to no response. That can move them into a top eight place. Yeah. I mean, that, that is for me... <laughs> the part that really <laughs> boggles the mind is that they will look themselves as potentially relegation candidates, yeah. but yeah. potentially top eight <laughs> candidates. I mean, when and where have we ever seen a scenario like That's that? That's just the nature of the, uh, the league this season. And this is the first, I think, we've seen of this nature. And uh, it's pressure. And uh, one coach basically was saying from the eighth position, they are all in danger. From the eight to 16, they're all in danger. But obviously, it's shaping up a little bit different right now. But uh, for everybody from beat vest up to down to the bottom, they can be dragged easily. Now, Super Sports United, one word. It's yep. a T word. Terrible season. Absolutely. With the resources they have, with the budgets they have, with the history they have, with so many things that they have in their favor, development structures that they have. Mm -hmm. You don't have a team like that. Ajax have got a development structure. What are they doing at the bottom of the table? They shouldn't be there. And I mean, if you look at it, and I mean, if we had to tell anybody at the start of the season that come the 27th game, Super Sport, they, would, they say to us, we're mad. And exactly what you're saying. When Baxter came, he bought mm. many players, or he signed many players. He signed some of the best players he worked with. Let's I mean, Morgan what a player. Gould. Morgan Gould. He, he yeah. signed the players that are players that have the experience, combined it with the youth, as you mentioned, and you've got a, you've got a recipe for success. I think why, where they fell short was they weren't experienced enough mm. to play on the continent as well as manage. Because if you look at it, Rob, they were behind by a number of fixtures. Right. And everybody said... No, they're going to catch up. They'll mm, be in the top mm, six mm, or top, mm. top five. And it just didn't happen. Immediately when they started losing matches, it had a snowball effect. And when you're playing catch-up, Rob, mm. the pressure is, is huge. And they just couldn't handle it. All right. Now, we, we, we were saying earlier on that we're going to try and explain what happens with Platinum Stars. Now, Platinum Stars literally sit with 21 points. So they've got three games left. Only three games. Ajax Cape Town got three games left, Right. Mm -hmm. So they can get, let's say they win all three games. They can get to what, 30? 30 points. Yeah. 30 points. You nail it on 30 points. But Ajax Cape Town, if they just win one of their three games, then it's all over. Yeah. Then we can already put the red line here and say relegated. History. Gone. History. Both Ajax and Supersport, they just need to win one game each. Yeah. And then the league uh, obviously decides, or should I say Platinum have decided their fate. Then they're gone. They're simply gone. I mean, Ajax Cape Town, a lot revolves around an outstanding case and etc. But let's not even touch on that because for us, that isn't a point. That's boardroom stuff that might just bore us. So we don't want boardroom. Right? So, we have boardroom. so we don't want that. All right, a quick peek here because this is where it disturbs me most, though, that the absolute premiership top goal scorer is going to go get an award for a golden Jeez. boot. Yeah. A golden boot. Mm. Not copper, or a, a golden boot for 11 goals. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Wasn't it the same or just what, uh, what three seasons? Uh, seasons, yeah. You Bernard know what? Parker yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. What makes it interesting, uh, Robbie, Pasitao, 
who's not really an out and out star. Yeah. He plays in several, he sometimes finds himself playing as a right sided attacker. Central, he plays, plays as a number nine on a certain moment, depending on the coach. Sometimes he plays as a 10. Yeah. So, you know, if he's able to do what he has, it surely begs to, def to ask the question that other strikers need to come to the party. Because, I mean, it's just not acceptable that we're not increasing in that department. But w while we talk about that and lament the number of goals that were scored or not scored, we also got to praise Persitao because for a player that is not an out and out striker to have scored 11, to be there with the Ramakalelas of this world says something because on top of that, he has assisted yes. in 13, 13. Yes. goals. One, three, 13 key. goals. And over the weekend, he could have scored two more. But what did he do? He decided to assist. Mm. And that's the sort of player that he is. It is extra time. The journey begins right here. At this point in time, I don't think there's any team that is playing and they say the game is not important. We are just thinking about the next match. All right, so we are interactive as well on social media. So keep all of those uh, uh, Twitter messages. Uh, people also, uh, I find people are still faxing us. I don't know, 2018, sending faxes. But yeah, I also do send us your emails as well. Which, whichever <laughs> form of communication, we're not going to discriminate against you. All we want is just your thoughts on a beautiful game within the Amsterdam Premiership for this season. It's coming to a close. It's getting exciting. And there's so much talkability about everything as well and let's quickly remind you as well because the more we get to the end the more we run out of time the more you cry at home and say ah but you left out this and spot on didn't highlight this and we don't have time for cassie flavor all right that's going to come to an end because from next week we are going to start the show at 20 hundred hours yeah make a note of that don't say we told you late 20 hundred hours make a note of that extra time will start at 20 hundred hours we'll give you an hour and a half of absolute wonderful uh, reviews as well looking back at the weekend now th the exciting thing and this has been happening i remember the sundowns game when they played against amazulu it was a packed capacity crowd but it was nowhere near what we saw yesterday as well i mean here yeah, i talked about the brunch managers they came all the way through from hammersdale some were even from Gauteng, from Katlehong. They were there, they were attending, holding on very dearly to their branches because they are branch <laughs> managers. You mustn't, you mustn't mess around. False loop, they were there. They came from uh, Kwamashu as well. But it was all for the love of the game. Who said you need tickets to watch? They paid. They paid their tickets to come inside, and they were there nice and early. I mean, we were there early before broadcast, and I can tell you that the main grandstand was already packed uh, with two hours to go before the kickoff of that match. The turnstiles, the safety officer had to come in as well and declare just before halftime that he's not going to be taking or allowing a single person in as well. They were using those trees at times very legally to come in and gain access into the stadium. You know what? South African police services did their job. They went there, they dealt with the problem, but they got vantage point. If HD is not attainable, that is the proper HD in between the trees. But you know what? That's the color and the nature of SA football. 14,500 people attended that game. So we just want to salute you for being part of an atmosphere that really made a difference. And the people that were watching at home got the vibe of that. Faruka and Precious is there together with Mr. Juicy Lips. Now, I don't know, this player, 
somehow the season's coming to an end, but his season is starting, and that's Eckstein. What's going on? Well, I think he, you know, he's, just, he's just peaking at the right moment, Rob. You know, he's always had the potential, but unfortunately didn't live up to it. Yes. But he scored now when it matters for the team, and he got him three important points. Changed his game slightly. <laughs> How he, did he change it? He, as an attacking midfielder, more like a number 10. He always played a little bit to the side and, and they never went forward. But I think what has changed this season is beginning to attack the box a bit more. It hurts, obviously, when you get in pools. You get kicked mm. and all sorts of yeah. things happen. But uh, yeah, that's let's the look at this now. year, uh, Willie. It's Malongan, obviously, who does a good job of mm -hmm. aggressively running to the area, to the byline, and he cuts it back. And look at the numbers. How many times do you get those numbers in the box for Kaya's Chiefs? And uh, once his pass makes a run, and uh, there's Ucastro there, there's um, uh, Umun there, and there's Uzulu there. There's everybody available, basically, ready to pounce onto the ball. And the finish was uh, just sublime. I mean, look at the finish from Eckstein. Side-footed it into the goal. Brilliant goal. Oh, I, that's why you're saying that. When you talk about slightly changing his game, obviously it works in his favour and it avoids him becoming a player that always comes off the bench. He can afford now to start. I mean, if obviously you get into a position where you help the team to score goals, not only creating, he's assisting in the process. And uh, basically, I think uh, we're going to see a bit more of him. I can only hope he, he gets better. He, you just have to be brave. I yeah. think uh, when you are that type of a player, you will get kicked, but mm. you have to be brave. Look at Tao. He gets kicked just about every week, but uh, he keeps going. He never stops. You talk about somebody that uh, keeps going and keeps uh, going very, very strong. Now, he has scored for six different teams within professional ranks. And I'm talking about Bopuri Kanyeza here. And this was no different for Rukan. Just take it away for us in terms Absolutely. of what he was doing right now. player who's matured like fine wine, Robbie. Mm -hmm. Let's look at him. Over to you, Willie. Uh, obviously, just pause it right there. This is a set piece, Robert. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in favour of Orlando Pirates, but you look at the spread of players. Each time you attack the attacking dead, you want to make sure that you cover these areas where the ball is more likely to go. The far side is covered, the other side is covered, but the central part where the, the ball is more likely to go is not covered. That, for me, was the first problem for, for Orlando Pirates. Now, let's see what happens after that. Because they didn't do that, let's see the impact of not being able to cover Amazulu gets a chance to clear that ball. That second ball should have been a Pirates ball. But even thereafter, um, Umakola, who was supposed to have played his part here, he does, but not good enough. It's where the ball spills to now that uh, also plays to an advantage. Unkleng, he picks it up from there. He's got all the time. He looks up into where he can play the ball. And obviously, Karulu sends the opportunity here. And he's alongside Maele, who we thought Maele had an advantage, but because... Um, he doesn't anticipate the speed of uh, Ukaruru. He gets beat here. Yeah. And then, from there, the ball gets played forward. Okay, there we go. And for me, but the danger here is Mkleng had more time to pick on Karun. Mm. Beautiful ball played to start with. Now, let's come and look at what Shitolo does here as one of the central defenders. And uh, his only attention is to the crosser of the ball or the potential crosser of the ball. But what is happening behind him? Uma Budikanyesa. At this stage, I thought Mabudi wasn't too far, but the anticipation sure. is what really helps him. And the beautiful ball played across. And obviously, more experienced Mabudi takes full advantage of the opportunity. He slots it on. Oh. I mean, it's, it's great of him because you look at a player now who's kind of ended a nine-game run without scoring a goal, and he, and he came very, very good indeed. You've got to go back to November of last year to uh, when that happened. But let's move to another player here who's been, uh, he's just been racking up as well. Man of the match awards has been uh, the dominant force as, as far as Orlando Pirates is concerned, and that is Umusa Nyatama. What's he doing right, Farouk? He is an integral part of this team that has reinvented himself, Rob. And we look at it here from a defensive perspective. We look at it here from Amazulu's perspective. If you look at the organization here, a lot to be desired. If you look at the area here, you've got five whites, in fact, six white shirts being marked by four players. And as the ball is played in, Nyatama gets on the end of it. Now, if you look at it from another angle, you'll, you'll see why we say that it could have been done better. Look at this player. He should have been marking or double marking a player. This player should have come in there because you've got three players in the wall. Mm. You don't need another player. And if you look at it from there now, you'll clearly see that three was sufficient even for the short free kick that was taken there. 
but you need a player in front who's a blocker and you need a jumper. And if you look at the spaces between these players, that wasn't the case. You had Amazulu players standing around doing absolutely nothing. We understand the player here who's taking, he will take care of the second ball. But what are the other guys doing? And if you look at where uh, Nyatama manages to get between the players, I think Kevin will look back and say, this was, this was uh, clearly poorly, poorly defended. There we see those players in the wrong position. This is where they should have been. Now you look at the way they're defending here, Rob. Look at the space between the lines. So Mbata was left with absolutely mm. no cover. Mm. And when a keeper is in a situation, and Willie will allude to it, when he hasn't got the cover, you're exposing him, and Yatama took it. Well, he certainly took advantage of that. Uh, so a player who individually for Orlando Pirates here, gentlemen, you've got to give him credit for that, has been responsible for seven goals. He himself has managed to score four. He's assisted in three of those goals. And there he was on the day yesterday, providing a header to give Orlando Pirates that lifeline to bounce back as far as that game is concerned. But then, I mean, here's a player that I spoke to. I mean, we, we'll never look at it. We won't tell a straight... Uh, we won't take a, a illustration on this one. We'll just have a look at the player just in terms of what he does overall. Managing to get into uh, the box there. It's a bit of a scramble. He takes a direct hit at goal. Brilliant. I mean, it's anticipation. Yeah. Anticipation. He sees there's already two in the box. So there's no business for him to encroach into the box. But waits and see what happens. That ball fell perfectly. But again, Amazulu, look at two players in the center of the box with no green shirt in between. That is another problem that uh, Kevin Johnson will have to deal with. But Taling, of course, po perfectly positioned and... Uh, well taken shot, goalkeeper possibly unsighted yeah. slightly. I was going to say, you, the goalkeeper seemed to have not covered his near post sufficiently. Yes. But you can't take away anything from Kalinge's uh, uh, goal there, Robbie. He struck it with pace and accuracy. And, you know, for any keeper on the day, he could get beaten with a, a shot of that, that quality. All right. You talk about that quality. Let's not waste any time and go back and repeat that goal here. Because the attack comes on on the left. I mean, this is the same player who in the game against Super Sports United came on in the literally in the 81st minute. He had about nine minutes, and he said in the post-match interview that at least this time he had a bit more time mm, when, mm, when he mm. came on to settle down, acclimatize, be able to read the game a bit better from a playing perspective, and look at where it ends up. Boom. And, of course, remember, he's been injured for quite a while. That's why he hasn't been playing. And uh, even him coming on in the previous games... Uh, sure. Uh, picking up a little bit of fitness, that's why he's beginning to feel a little bit better to play more. And he's rewarded with a goal. Uh, I mean, I, I know some people at the stadium are a bit confused and saying, why is, why is Palinga <laughs> wearing a bra? No, 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 no. I mean, the, there's, there's some technological things that are strapped it's there. It's a heart rate monitor, and, and It's a heart rate monitor. They switch it on at the back every time before they go through yeah. as well. So I, 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 I whoa, easy. No, no, no. He's, he's, not, he's not wearing that. He's not wearing that. Um, let's talk tactics slightly here. You know, because for me, there was a stage just sitting behind the bench where the name was written down, the player was ready, he had r rubbed the Vicks on his chest and he was ready. ready to he had, go. And he was, he, he was ready to come on, mm, mm, yeah. right? So let's have a quick look at this because, I mean, there's Rulani there. The, they've scored a goal. So he races across, he races across. I said, ah, let's cancel, let's cancel, let's cancel that one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's cancel that substitution. Ah. One side. <laughs> yeah. He took the paper, sits him down, says, aye, 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 aye. Now we have scored a goal. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm spotting something here. Yeah. And that is when, instead of him getting carried away by a goal, immediately, as an assistant coach, it triggered that that's a striker we're bringing on. Mm. Yeah. Now we are scoring. Yeah. So let's quickly change that. They brought Munetzi in. Robbie, it's a tactical ploy, and it's a brilliant tactical ploy at the appropriate time. This is the value of a quality assistant. He saw the reason to quickly change it because at that moment in time, he realized that they were a goal to the good. They yeah. needed to lock the game. And they were not chasing the game. So the initial thoughts was, it's one all. We want to win this game. Yes. We're chasing for the league honors. Let's bring in mm. the big man. Yes. We get, the ball, we get him on the ball and we know he's got the ability. But then with Munenzi coming in, Kabuza was then sent away. Yeah. And he was there. And I think... <laughs> that was a masterstroke. Look at uh, Rolani yeah. there. He's, he realizes that if Kabuza is substituted, then it, it, it obviously loses the opportunity for them to lock the game. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I mean, there it is. And, and like I'm saying, it, it, it literally took the paper away. Uh, the, the fourth official was uh, logging on the number of the player to come on. But he has the right up until such time as he has signaled to the referee for the player to come on to change his mind. The goal came in, changed his mind, had the mind as well yes. to see that. That for me is brilliant. To think that yeah. uh, the coach didn't even say, um, the head coach that is, to say, okay, no, no, no. Yes. Go. They, they, they basically are of the same mind. They're in the same wavelength. Then he calmly accepts the situation and he understands this is the call of the hour. Yes. They need to lock this game in. Considering at the way Amazon were coming at them, Amazon were far from being finished at the time. There was still a possibility that they can get uh, an equalizer. And uh, it was clear that they need to make a decision of this nature. Just one point, Robbie. This is not something that he did unilaterally. This is something they discussed before. So it's not like he did it to, to, to sort of undermine the coach. Mm. This they discussed in the pre-match. If we come to a certain moment and we are on evil, equal terms, we will bring in Gabuza. Mm. But obviously, if not, if we score, then we lock the game with Gunensi. Sure. So this is actually it's all in the, the, the synergy yeah. that yeah. Will is talking to. They both on the same wavelength. But like I'm saying that, the, the, the ability to log in your thought pattern at that moment when you're celebrating a goal. And you can see Gunensi was there. He was one of the players who was warming up already anyway. Mm. And he was celebrating, not thinking that he was going to be the player to come on. But then I did pose a question to the coach. Post the match, let's hear it in his own words, why that decision was taken. At that stage, very unfortunately, that Gabuza was supposed to come in because we wanted to go for a win, clearly. Uh, we, we have then scored the goal, and having that in mind, we have stopped the uh, substitution in order to close the shop, as they are calling, uh, putting Munetzi inside, uh, ironing that defensive aspect, and looking forward uh, to win the match. All right. I mean, there it is. Yeah, different facets sense, of the game. Hey? Different facets of the game yeah. calls for a certain decision. And uh, this is what Pirates had in mind. And uh, that's why when a goal is scored at any stage of the game, it forces a certain uh, train of thoughts from the bench. And this is one of those that we, say, we saw coming alive at a very critical time of the game. All right. Uh, on a quick, I, I'm not sure if we have this here because when we're talking about tactical change, mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember I was flicking my mind back to the game when they played against the uh, uh, Bloemfontein Celtic. And then... Augustine Mulanga was the key factor. We talked earlier about Kalinge being the key factor, coming off the bench and then being able to score. So here now, I mean, we, we, we saw it even in that game. Yeah, super sub comes in. Mm. Not yeah. just any ordinary goal. Yeah. A star, a star goal from him. And he's a player where we're expecting a lot from him in any case. Yeah. He comes here with a massive reputation. Well, it's, 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 it's so gratifying when a plan comes together and coaches normally work on these aspects and uh, you know Mulenga didn't dis disappoint when he came on he scored a very very important goal so you know sometimes your your plan doesn't come to fruition yeah. but in this case you as a coach and a technical team can oh, pat yourself man. on the back and say well done mm. and, and 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 again it is the teamwork and that is why we would talk about the tactical changes it's a tactical change now I mean coach didn't expect me to ask that question but then he answered it in a way that says you know what I it understand. Yes. I understand why my assistant did what he did, and it is fine. It is what we do together. So that is why we're able to capture as well with our super sport uh, cameras uh, just that little bit of action, what it means. We translate it for you right here next time. Now we're going to head into a break. We're going to come back again. There's still so much more, including Mr. Spot on. Hey, Spot, I don't know. The, the whole Gigi Buffon <laughs> thing still baffles me. I don't know why I was getting excited, but we'll go as far back as that controversy. Persita, was he offside? Hmm, I don't know. We'll hit the break, but let's find out what the, uh, what the coaches had to say post the match in their own words. We had the better chances in the first half. I thought we played uh, good football. Uh, overall, good game of football. And for the 9,000 people that have attended here, yeah, I think they saw one of the better games in the PSL this season. Yes, one is uh, looking to win the league. The other one is looking to get points to stay on top. And uh, I thought we both gave ourselves a good account of ourselves. Uh, unlucky for us today, we go home losers. Uh, but uh, I think we can take a lot of this, a lot of this game out uh, into the next, uh, the last three. First of all, if you really want to uh, uh, build a team, uh, you need to bring them to this stadium against this team to mature, to grow. Because this match 
is helping like five, five other ordinary matches from the point that this is the team that does not allow you to, uh, to stand on flat foot all the time you need to be on toes from start to end. Uh, we have started on the back foot allowing them uh, from counter attacks uh, to surprise us one counter attack they scored. Later on, we came back in the game. I personally believe that that situation, the goal, uh, it was a clear chance for the goal. It was supposed to be red card, but it's not mine to, uh, this to look at. We scored from that set piece practically. And then on half time, we regrouped and we went all out, knowing that we are tired from the Wednesday's game and knowing that we need uh, with possession, patient build up uh, to build the situation that will bring us in, in chance to score. That chance finally came. We have later on looked to close the game and we won this game. I'm very happy because it is an effort of the team, technical team, but before anything, total credit to the players because they really shown what is meaning jersey to them, what badge is meaning to them.